friends, welcome back. We're continuing our discussion on torque, on torsion. We're going to talk about power transmission and how that relates to torsions. And don't forget about how far we've come so far. I kind of have all the equations that we've talked about so far. Remember in our last video, we started talking about torque, and we talked about shear stress due to uh, torsion in a shaft, TC over J. And so we're going to continue to use that today, but we're going to kind of give you some of the variables in that equation in a different form, okay? Because you know what we like to do is like to give you, you know, those letters in a different way and make you have to go find things from this equation to plug into that equation, okay? But anyway, what we've got today, we're talking about torsion, we're talking about power transmission, now we've got an electric motor that generates three kilowatts of power. Okay, so what is power? Okay, so power, you're going to get in the uh, SI units, is going to come in kilowatts or watts. Okay, and what is a watt? Well, remember, power is just work over some period of time, okay? So a watt is a Newton meter per second, or you might see it as a joule per second, okay? So it's work over time, okay? Um, I guess if you were, well, you could really get on down with your units and say, okay, a Newton is a kilogram meter per second squared times meters times seconds which would give you, what is that? A kilogram meter squared per second squared. When would you ever use those units? Well, I don't know. Maybe you're given something and you need to make sure your units cancel out. You know, I've been preaching to you about canceling your units out. So important, right? So there you go for SI. And then, of course, for freedom units, okay? U.S. customary. Okay, we have one horsepower, right? Which was invented by a guy that came up with an engine for a car and he needed a unit to say, how good is my car? It will, you know, outperform. So then once he came up with the, the horsepower as a unit, he had to go find some way to quantify <laughs> what was a horsepower. But over the years, a horsepower has become 550 foot pounds per second, right? Forget about dividing stuff by 10, Mr. Metric Unit. We're going to divide by 550. How about that? So <laughs> anyway, you're going to see horsepower given uh, and know that it's foot pounds per second. Again, foot pounds work divided by seconds for time, okay? What would today's lesson be without a brand new equation? Here we go, okay? So power is equal to T times omega, okay? P is for power. That's what power is. T, torque. Torque, what is that? That's uh, foot-pounds or newton meters. And then you got this guy, new variable of the day. My students call this T booty, okay? Now, you get that out of your head, I dare you, okay? <laughs> you got this guy right here, omega. What is omega? Omega stands for angular velocity, okay? And how does angular velocity need to come? It needs to be in these units. It needs to be in radians per second, okay? That's what your goal is to get. If, if I give you an equation, I give you any kind of um, angular velocity. I can give it to you a lot of different ways, but your goal is to get it into radians per second. So how could I give it to you? Well, I could give it to you. Give it to me, baby. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh, sorry. What is wrong with you today? <laughs> I could give it to you in ripums, RPMs, right? How do you get that? How would you get? RPMs, which is a very common way to express angular velocity, is this, a revolution per minute, okay? Let's see, I gotta get rid of that revolution, so I'm gonna put a revolution on the bottom, 
And there's two pi radians in a revolution. And then I need to get, remember, I need to get radians per second, so I get it rid of minutes. So I'm going to put a minute on the top. And what do I have? 60 seconds in a minute. And so guess what? Revs cancel, the mins cancel, and it leaves me with radians per second. So 2 pi divided by 60 will convert RPMs into radians per second, which is what I need, right? Okay. So there's our new equation, and there's all of the terms in the equation. So what do we got here this time? We want to find shear stress. Tau. That's for torsion. That's a twisting shaft. It's rotating, right? That sounds like shear stress sounds like that guy, doesn't it? TC over J. But notice, in this problem, they don't give me torque anywhere, right? So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to use our new equation to back that guy out to then go and substitute Ba bam over there into that equation, right? So then we can get tau, which is what we need. So the goal, find shear stress tau in section A, B. Well, here's A, here's B, here's C right over here, okay? And section B, C. So what's going on here? What's going on there? Uh, of the 25 millimeter solid shaft. So remember, we gotta find J, and I have two equations, I wrote them that both for us over here. Here's J for hollow which is the outer radius minus the inner radius to the fourth. But, but that's for hollow. For solid, we don't have an inner radius. We just have an outer only. So it's just pi over 2 times c to the fourth. Remember that guy? Don't get j confused with i, right? Okay. So the motor is putting out 3 kilowatts, right? I've got a bearing over here, a pillow block. And what about this, this, maybe this is like a big uh, factory and there's a belt on this, right? A belt on that and it's taken off and this belt is driving one machine and that belt over there is driving another machine, right? So this one is taking, that's a W for what? One kilowatt of power. That one over there is taking two kilowatts of power. But what's the shaft doing? Shaft AB is having to deliver power to this guy and that guy, right? But shaft BC is only delivering power to this guy over here, okay? So let's see if we can get this, right? If P equals T times omega, then T must equal P divided by omega, right? So T, A, B, must be P divided by omega. Now, what is omega? Rad radians per second is what I need, right? I need that. But what does it tell me? The motor is running 50 revs per second. That's close to radians per second. At least it's not revolutions per minute. We gotta convert that, don't we? Okay, so omega is equal to 50 revs per second, but I'm gonna get rid of revolutions, right? Divided by two pi radians. And my revolutions cancel out. That's going to leave me with radians per second. Where's my calculator? <laughs> I saw one of your comments, and this, this, the comment said, hey, every time Hanson, we'll make a drinking game. Every time Hanson loses his calculator, you got to take a drink. Yeah, calculator. Okay, here we go. What do we got? 50 uh, times 2. Oh, that's, why did I need my calculator for that? 50 times 2 is 100 times pi is one, 314 uh, radians per second. Okay, <sighs> didn't need the calculator for that, but I'm gonna need it here in a minute. Okay, so TAB, okay, the torque in section AB is the power in section AB, which is what? Three kilowatts, but can we just put it in watts, right? So let's talk about 3,000 uh, watts, which is what? A Newton meter per second, right? Divided by omega, which is 314 radians per second. So guess what? The seconds are gonna cancel out. The radians kind of a unitless thing there. And it's gonna leave me with torque in Newton meters, which that's good stuff, right? So. Clear, 3,000 divided by 314 equals 
TAB, the torque in shaft AB is equal to 9.55 Newton meters. Okay. Okay. Now how about TBC? Okay. What is the power over here? Well, it's only one kilowatt, which is going to be 1,000. Uh, Newton meters per second divided by the same angular velocity, right? 314 radians per second. So one, oh, clear. 1,000 divided by 314, 3.18. Okay. So TBC equals 3.18. Newton meters. Okay, so there's the torque in both sections of the shaft. Now we're not there yet, right? Because we're still headed towards this. We're trying to find shear stress in each section of the shaft. But I think we're almost there, aren't we? Okay. Um, can we off to the side? Can we go ahead and calculate J? Is that be okay if we do that? So what is that? Let's see. J is equal to what? Here it is right here. Pi over 2 times C to the 4th. And what is C for a 25 uh, millimeter diameter shaft? Okay. C is 12.5. It's the radius. Okay. So 12.5 to the 4th. Okay. All right, let me see if I can do this. 12.5 to the fourth power is a big number. And then times pi. And then divided by 2 is 38,349. Let's call it 38,350. Okay. And what's the units on that on J? Because what did I do? I took millimeters and I raised it to the fourth power. So that's millimeters to the fourth, okay? M, M to the fourth, okay? So here we go. Let's start with this guy. Let's find A, B first. So here we go. Tau, A, B is equal to T, C over J. T, right there. 9.55 Newton meters. Now, everything I have is in millimeters. I think we ought to get rid of that meters right there. So let's go ahead and just do this. Let's do, that's a meter on the top, so let's put a meter on the bottom, and that's 1,000 mm's, okay? Get him out of there. And then times C, right? TC over JC is what? From the center of the shaft to the outside of the shaft, which is a radius, which is 12.5, okay? Divided by J, which we just calculated, didn't we? 38,350 millimeters to the fourth, okay? Now what do we have? We have millimeter and millimeter. That's a millimeter squared. Burnt, burnt. And then what is that? Oh, that gets rid of two of those. So it leaves us with newtons over millimeter squared, which is what? That's a megapascal, isn't it? So here we go. 9.55 times 1,000 times 12.5 equals, divided by 38, 350 equals 3.11. How is that? 3.11 megapascals, okay? That is the answer for tau AB equals tau AB, okay? That's one of the answers I'm looking for. Now, what about the other one? Let's make us a little, a wee bit of room up here and see if we can get the last one. Okay. Tau uh, BC is equal to, just like we did down here, right? It's equal to, there's the torque in that section, 3.18 times 1,000, I'm doing the exact same units, right? So I'm not gonna grab my units. Times C, 12.5, same diameter. Is J the same? J is the same. Divided by 
38350. Therefore, tau BC is equal to, here we go, 3.18 times 1,000 times 12.5 equals, divided by 38350 equals 1.04 megapascals again. Okay, there it is. So there's, there's an answer and there's an answer, okay? So I hope that makes sense. Power transmission. And really, what is the primary thing that you're going to do with this? It's just an alternate way to write that torque, right? So I've got to, I, I got to make you think a little bit more critically to use power to get torque to go over there and get shear stress. Okay, I hope this makes sense. Glad to help you, and I'll see you on the next video.